Hello everyone, my name is David Ramirez. I am a professor and the chair of the Department of Environmental Engineering. I would like to welcome all of you to the Javelina Nation. I hope you, you have a good uh, start of the semester. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Department of Environmental Engineering and the different programs that we have to offer. Um, in this video, you will see presentations by different faculty and students talking about the different research activities that are, that are going on here in our department, as well as uh, active student organizations and what they do for our communities. Um, let me tell you something else. Uh, our department is one of the few standalone um, departments in the nation that offer unique environmental engineering opportunities and, uh, and education, not only at the undergraduate level, but also the master's and the doctoral uh, level as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation of our department. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. David Ramirez again. Uh, I am a uh, department chair and professor of the Department of Environmental Engineering. I would like to introduce you to our department and so we can so you can learn about the different faculty and student activities that we do here in, in environmental engineering. Let's go ahead and let me start by introducing our department webpage. If you look at the College of Engineering website, then you look for the Department of Environmental Engineering, and this is what you will see. Let me show you. Okay. In our main page, you will find information about faculty, information about the students, the type of research activities that we do um, by faculty and staff, and a section that is for general audience. We call it K-12 corner. If you want at some point to find or request more information about our program, feel free to click on this link. You will need to provide your name, your email address, and an optional phone number if you wish, and you will indicate what program you are interested in to learn more about about uh, BS program, master's or PhD program, and you submit. As, and one of you will be contacting you and give you more, more information about our program. Okay, so please feel free to explore our, our web page. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we offer a comprehensive education in environmental engineering not only at the Bachelor of Science level, but also at the Master's of Science and Doctoral of Philosophy degree levels. Okay. One thing that I mentioned here is we have a fast track program. Okay. And what that means to you is that for those of you who are interested in not only getting a Bachelor of Science degree, a BS degree, but also a Master of Science degree in less time, we are offering this fast track program in which you, you can earn these two degrees in four years. Okay. Um, for more information, please let us know and, and we will um, be happy to work with you on a special degree plan, especially a, 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 a degree plan for you so we can make sure that you can graduate with a bachelor's and a master of science degree in four years. Okay. Let us know. Something that I would like to point out and I, mentioned, I, I have here in this um, yellow box is that we are EBIT accredited. ABET is an accreditation board for engineering and technology. This is very important for an engineering program because it shows the quality and the good program that we have to offer. Our Bachelor of Science program in environmental engineering is very accredited, so this is something important to consider. Now, let's talk about what uh, are the different activities that our students uh, are, are doing here in, in our program. As you can see here, we have very uh, active student body. So our department is, is, is hosting four student organizations, including the student chapter of the American Academy of Environmental Engineering and Scientists, uh, the John Student Chapter of the Water Environmental Association of Texas, joined with the Texas American Water Works Association. We also have the student chapter of the Air and Waste Management Association. And for those students that are in a graduate program, we have the Association of Doctoral Students. The names that you see here are presidents of these organizations, and some of them will be talking to you about what the kind of uh, cool thing that they do as part of the organization. But I'm going to leave that for, for later. Let's go into details and see what is an environmental engineer. You, you may or may not have heard about what environmental engineers can do, but I want to show you. So, in general, so what an environmental engineer is going to do is going to use Everything that you learn in your classes, talking in, in, in science, like chemistry, microbiology, and many engineering courses. So 
So you take all that knowledge together and you develop uh, new solutions to many, many environmental problems that we're facing today and that we have faced for many, many years. And these are just some examples. For example, the availability of water. So uh, as an engineer, environmental engineer, you have to make sure that uh, we have enough resources, not only in water resources, but also in terms of air resources, and that they are clean. They have a very good quality and, in, in, and develop new technologies that are going to be able to mitigate emissions that are emitted to the atmosphere, either to the water or to the air phase. Municipal solid waste is an important uh, aspect in our program in which we show the students how to manage and what are the new ideas that you can develop to uh, um, manage those uh, wastes that we produce on, on a daily basis. Okay, we talk about reusing and recycling. Okay, let me show you a video that was developed by the National Science Foundation and it's a very good description of what our environmental engineering can do. Okay, uh, let me click on, on this link and and you will see that in a moment. I think oftentimes the public takes for granted that they have clean water to drink and that they have enough clean water to drink. But that's something that people are working very hard to ensure. We want people to have confidence that that water will be healthy. They don't need to buy bottled water. My name is Marla Simon. I'm an environmental engineer with Trump and Kearney, and I work in New York City. Environmental engineering is really where public health and environmental needs meet. Environmental engineers work with cleaning up contamination or preventing contamination of the air, soil, and water. We study where there could be an impact on the environment or people's health, and then we create solutions to try and mitigate that impact. Tomorrow's area of specialty is water engineering, specifically water treatment. So, I'm here at a friend's house, and I'm here to test uh, lead in the water, because often in these old houses that were built maybe 50 or 100 years ago, there's concern about lead in the water. I'm collecting samples to make sure that the water is safe. At Mount Kearney, I work on a lot of different types of projects, anything from determining water storage needs or disinfection needs, upgrading drinking water facilities or wastewater facilities, doing overall uh, master planning. I also look at sustainability of projects. And that's something that we're very much focused on now. I'm working on a project in Nassau County, Long Island, at the Bay Park Sewage Treatment Plant. We're working with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation to meet the strict regulation we have put on us to remove the proper amount of chlorine and soft oxygen from the waste we're leaving the plant and entering the water bodies. So tomorrow is working with us here to monitor the levels of soft oxygen and chlorine. Working for an engineering firm provides tomorrow with an opportunity to work on a variety of projects and to spend lots of time outdoors, which she loves. I like to start my day outside, whether it's running or surfing in the morning or biking to work. My working environment is a mix. I sometimes work in the office. Other days, I'll head to the field. I quite like my hours that I work. It's usually a 40-hour week. We're here at Meadow Lake in New York City, and I've taken a sample of the lake water to test for turbidity. I basically want to understand if there are a lot of particles that are suspended in the water. It's about 30, which is higher than what we would want for drinking water, but for swimming for recreational purposes, that's fine. I'm going to stop the video for a moment. Uh, there is more information about this video. But if you want to um, take a look at this video in more details, please feel free to uh, to visit our website. Um, in in the tab, it's called K to Twelve Corner for the general audience. If you click on that one, the first video that you, you that you see there is the one that I show you. So there is more to it. So please feel free to visit our website and learn more about what this video is all about. 
All right. So you saw from the video that environmental engineering can do many things. Okay. That's why students in our program, when they come into our program, we make sure that the students will get strong skills in the main categories. Okay. As you see the lady in the video, she was she had to communicate and to lead a group. Okay, that's why students in the program they need to uh, have a strong management and leadership skills. So we we um, encourage the students to to uh, take internship opportunities, co-op, uh, and different courses that will help you to uh, make your management and leadership skills stronger. Okay, as an engineer, of course, your uh, problem solving skills. Um, uh, are strong, okay, or should be a strong. You develop that throughout uh, those skills throughout your your career, okay. But we will help you to to, to reach at that point, okay. Communication is important. Creativity, creativity is so uh, so so crucial because you one of the things that environmental engineers can do is to develop the next technologies, the new technologies that are going to help us to make your world better, okay. Communication is not only oral, but also you need to have a very strong reading and writing communication skills. That's why uh, you will learn that through our, 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 pro our program here in, in, in Kingswood. Okay? And of course, math and science. Math and science, you, you will be taking a lot of, a lot, lots of uh, um, science and math classes that will help you, that will really help you to, get, to be a more, um, a better person, a better engineer. So we will help you to do that if you join our, our program. Okay. We're not alone. So, environment. What I particularly I like about our our field, our, our field of environmental engineering, is that we are a multidisciplinary field um, by nature. We talk to many people, including a lot of uh, engineers, including civil engineers, electrical engineers, chemical engineers, and mechanical engineers. So we make sure that we talk to everybody because environmental problems are holistic problems. So it involves a lot of people, and we cannot do it just by ourselves. That's why uh, communication is important, and you can learn about the different fields as well. You can learn about energy balances. You can you learn about sustainability. Um, um, making sure that your instrumentation and services are correct and that you produce products that are uh, valuable. Okay, so that's why it's important for you to talk about, um, to, to interact with more people, not just in engineering, but also in the sciences as well and administration. I mentioned about internships. Okay, something that I'm very proud of is of our students have taken different opportunities, many opportunities, and as you can see here in this list, that they have gone into internships. Even some of them have got a job because of these internship opportunities. I will say, well, the great majority of them. Okay, uh, these three ladies that you see here in this picture, they went to the Czech Republic. Okay, and they stayed over the summer uh, for an internship opportunity, and that was a great learning experience. This other, uh, this all, this other group here, including me here, you can see me here, right here. Uh, um, we went to a research lab of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and we have a very good insight about how uh, researchers and, and scientists they do in terms of the environment. Okay? But the, li the list of different internship opportunities is long. Uh, our students go to Pioneer Natural Resources, Flint Hill, Valero, and you name it. So there are so many, many opportunities. I would like to introduce you two particular cases. Okay? Um, I want to let Annalisa and Francisco to tell you about their experiences as part of the, some internship opportunities. And later on, we will have more students that will tell, to tell you what is, is all about to be an environmental engineer and what are the opportunities that they have had while we, they are in a program. All right, let me start with Annalisa. Annalisa, she graduated recently, okay, in, in this past um, spring 2020. And Annalisa, she uh, did a couple of internships. And let me show you what Annalisa has to say about, about uh, her experience. Professionally, it's developed me in the way that I, I would be able to speak in front of an audience. So, like, whenever you're an engineer, you'll have to do, like, some professional speaking. And so a lot of classes here have prepared me for that. 
they've kind of let me look into the background that in the environmental disasters that have happened. The whole point of internships, I guess, during the your undergraduate years is really to prepare you for what it's going to be like in the real world. And are like a keystone in preparing your, yourself or preparing a student for, you'll be able to apply all the things you learn in class in um, a real world uh, experience. So that's why it's super vital. And uh, right after you get out of college, it'll be a lot more appealing to, you know, anybody because you'll have some kind of experience putting the knowledge that you learned in school. The whole reason why I joined environmental engineering or pursued it as my, like, for my specific one is really because of my passion for wanting to kind of create a better future for like our future generation. I guess you need to aim in Kingsville is really the small class size and the one-on-one -on -one that we can kind of have with the professors. And the professors, they know you by name, they know what you do on the summer. It's like that kind of personal relationship networking opportunities that you'd be able to build here that you really wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. I agree 100% with Annalisa. Uh, internships is all about uh, gaining experience, getting knowledge and experience that is going to help you to get your job, your dream job. Okay. Now let let's, let me uh, ask Francisco. So I'm going to show you another video on Francisco that he's going to tell you about his experience as uh, in 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 internship. <laughs> The program itself is actually really great. The class sizes are very small, and that might seem insignificant, but really the one-to-one -one that you get with your team professors is just amazing. The program has been really great, and I have learned a lot of it both professionally and academically. I did this past summer was with uh, Water Mapping, which is a geoscientist consulting company. They focus on mapping oil spills, so whenever oil spill happens, they get out there with drones and map it. My job was to develop tools for them uh, using ArcMap and using uh, MapLab to improve or optimize their uh, processing uh, capabilities. Getting out there actually allowed me to see a wider perspective of what I'm learning in the classroom. When you're in the classroom, you know, it's just kind of looking at the theory. When you get out there and you start seeing things happening in real life, it is a great experience. Overall, this program is really great. You can find people doing pretty much everything related to environmental engineering. There's people working on wastewater treatment, there's people working on water treatment, on ditches, on uh, stormwater uh, capture, on so many different topics. And you wouldn't think that because they're a relatively small program, you wouldn't think that you would get so much coverage of all those areas. But you truly do. And being exposed to all of them because you have so great so faculty coverage, that's very significant. Yes, internships are very, very good experience, and you learn a lot of it from it. Okay, let's talk about something else. Okay, internships are good, but let me show you what I found um, as part of the uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and I found this information very um, interesting. Okay, and very um, motivating. Okay, let's take a look about. Uh, let's take a look at the job outlook. For environmental engineers. See, like in, the, in 2018, the median annual salary for an environmental engineer was um, a little bit over $87,000. That translates into approximately about a little bit over $42 per hour. Very cool, right? So, very, very appealing. Uh, this is very comparable to many other occupations and even uh, comparing to other engineers. Okay? It's not only about the salary, but take a look at the projection. So, um, if you join our program and if you graduate in the next three or four years, the outlook in terms of jobs available is going to be important. Okay, uh, the U.S. Department of Labor is um, estimating that is projecting that um, the environmental engineers, the employment will grow about five percent. Okay, in the next decade, which is is very um, very appealing. Also, I found this information and I want to share this with you. Um, the top five is this providing jobs for environmental engineers are shown in this table and take a look at it. Texas is uh, place number two, okay? It's in second place because the number of jobs are, that are available. But if you look at the average salary, see this. The, the Texas is offered the highest average salaries for environmental engineers. Wow, six figures. So this is really, really appealing. 
not all is all not everything is all about the the the, the salary itself but about uh, job security okay seeing this figure uh, this figure is showing uh, what are the most underemployed majors and what are the least underemployed majors okay i'm glad to report to you and presented that the fields of civil and environmental engineering are placed as the um, least underemployed measures which is very very appealing so you get a good job you get um, good salaries but also you have uh, a secure job for a long period a long time which is, is very attractive okay very neat so again uh, consider environmental engineering as an option and and and, and and let us know okay let's move on i want to introduce who we are who are the people so let me show you and introduce the faculty members some of these faculty will be talking to you a little bit later in in this presentation but uh, so far we have a faculty okay and i want to start with dr omar alcura dr alcura he is uh, he's um in the rio grande valley initiative he's taking care of our students there in the valley and his area of expertise is in hydrology Dr. Lucy Camacho, Lucy Mar Camacho, her research is in water purification applications. She's going to talk to you about the, the interesting research that they use in membrane desalination, desalination and other type of research. Dr. Kim Jones, Dr. Kim Jones, he's interested in the area of ecological engineering and he's going to talk about later about, um, about what uh, his students are working on. Dr. Lee Clapp, Dr. Clapp was our former um, department chair and his area of expertise is in environmental biotechnology. Dr. Adnan Rajiv, he is our new faculty in the program and he is interested in cyber physical system for water quantity and quality predictions. And I'm here, um, again, David Ramirez. Um, my area is about air quality and pollution control. Um, my research group it has worked on developing new technologies that is going to help mitigate emissions of pollutants to the atmosphere. Okay, we are also interested to see how good our indoor and outdoor air quality environments are, um, and, and so many other, so many other uh, interesting aspects. Dr. Jennifer Jennifer Ran, she is in the area of, of, of water quality and monitoring, and some of her, uh, her students are going to tell you about what they do in terms of research, including some in, interesting research in research about microplastics. And last but not least is Dr. Tushar Singha. Dr. Singh is interested in remote sensing and hydrology. Okay. He also is going to tell you about what kind of research he is, he is, he is working on um, in, in, in our program. Very important people in our department, our, our staff. Okay. Natalie Geragos is our administrative associate three, and she will be glad to help you with anything that you have to uh, uh, to take care on, on, on your academics, and she will be glad to, to help you. Joseph Nadi, Joseph Nadi, he's our lab technician. Anything related to the lab, he's, 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 he's going to help us uh, solve any, any issues in, um, or problems in the lab. Dr. Kumar, Dr. Vinay Kumar, he's a research scientist and he's working under the directive of Dr. Tushar Singh. Again, uh, this is my contact information. At any point, if you want to know more about our department, please let, let us know. Either go to our webpage and request more information or come and talk to me or, or any of our faculty members. Um, my, my, my phone number is 593 and my email address is shown here is David Pierre Ramirez at tamo.edu. Okay, feel free to let us know. If you want to visit our, our department, we have a, a good student program, a student ambassadors that they will be very glad to take you to our different labs and show you different classrooms and interact and, and get in a first-hand um, uh, experience on, on what we do as an environmental engineer. Okay. So I'm going to let, again, uh, more people from our department to tell you about what they do in, in, in their daily um, in the in the daily lives and what kind of research they do and some of students will be sharing with you some of the interesting uh, research and, and student activities that they, they do here in our program okay? including internships and so on you will um miranda de la garza later on is going to uh, show you some labs or some of our environmental engineering labs so you, so you will have an opportunity to see uh, to have a, a virtual lab okay and that's it for me again please let me know if you have any questions or comments thank you so much Hi, my name is Tushar Sinha and I'm an associate professor in environmental engineering at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. 
Environmental engineers design and manage water, land, and air resources. My research focuses on water resources engineering and hydrology. For example, we are looking at the freshwater sustainability and how we can manage our existing water resources. So we look at how the climate and extreme events and urbanization affect water availability. And then we are trying to co-manage our wetlands and reservoir operation to achieve more resilient water resources systems. Uh, this map shows locations of potential wetlands that could be restored in Brazos River Basin. And we are trying to look at how to optimize these locations for managing droughts and flood better in the region. Another aspect of my research is looking at water quality. So here uh, we are doing a project in Arroyo uh, River watershed. And here we are trying to optimize the geospatial locations of land use practices and how we can improve water quality. Uh, we are also working on National Science Foundation funded uh, sustainable water use center where we are looking at water availability and also the water quality issues and how we can uh, achieve the sustainability of South Texas. We have uh, several undergraduate and graduate research opportunities uh, to get involved in the research. So if you want to learn more about these opportunities, uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my information is available here. And thank you for your time and attention. Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Nani. I'm presently the lab technician of environmental engineering department. And I'm also a doctoral student in environmental engineering department working with Dr. Ren on nano enhanced electrokinetic remediation of heavy metal polluted soil. As we all know that heavy metal is one of the major pollutants in soil and this as a result of oil pollution and industrial waste. Um, over here we have state-of-the-art equipment that can help you succeed in any research line you are involved in. We have here the atomic absorption spectrophotometer used in uh, detecting heavy metal in soil sample. We also have my digestor here that is used for soil digestion. In other labs we have the ICPMS and ion chromatography. Um, if you join our research over here, um, I believe you're going to succeed. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm the newly elected historian for the organization AAES, or the American Association of Environmental Engineering and Scientists here at Texas A&M University of Kingsville. We're a well-established organization here on campus, and we participate in beach cleanups, fundraising, and volunteer work. We are small, but we are welcoming new members um, all the time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Miranda De La Garza, and I'm the vice president of Meet Tower. We Tawa is a newly founded organization here on Tamix campus that stands for the Water Environment Association of Texas and the Texas American Waterworks Association. What we do is we partner up with the professional organizations of We and Tawa in order to meet a common goal. We are an organization that focuses on the water sector in, of environmental engineering and we focus on park cleanups, beach cleanups, and other volunteer events. We hope to see you in this upcoming semester as we continue with our efforts in order to pursue our goals in Wheat Tower. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mohamed Shafiq. I am the president of AWMA here at Texas A&M Kingville. AWMA stands for Air and Waste Management Association. It is a nonprofit organization in more than 60 countries with, over, with thousands of members. Uh, we here at Texas A&M Kingsville specifically like to do volunteering, seminars. AWMA's core purpose is to have an open forum, neutral open forum for people to exchange information and knowledge on environmental situations so we can better make decisions and critical thinking. Uh, it looks really good for employers when you have this on your resume, especially if you're in the environmental field or you want to go into the environmental field because it shows that you're interested in the professional field of this and that you're also interested in continuing your education. Hello and welcome to Texas A&M University Kingsville's Engineering Complex. I am Miranda Del Garza, a master's student in environmental engineering, and today I'll be giving you a tour of some of the labs associated with our department. 
So our department has a total of 14 labs. Some are used for teaching and others are used for research space. So the first lab that we'll be going through today is our main teaching lab. And in the fall semester, undergraduate students will be taking a, a lab course where they'll conduct weekly experiments in order to gain a better understanding of some basic concepts associated with environmental engineering. Some of these basic concepts are related to wastewater treatment plant processes, which are demonstrated here in our tabletop demonstration. So something else that our lab is affixed with is pH and DO meters, and this is used in order to gain a better understanding of water quality parameters. So if we come alongside this area here in our lab, we can see other instruments that we have. So our lab is equipped with an autoclave, and this is used for sterilizing some of our equipment. If we come down here, we also have ovens for curing and drying, and we have a spectrophotometer, which is used in order to calculate the amount of light that can pass through some chemical substances. We also have balances, as well as furnaces for heating. So something that's unique about our lab is that we actually have the only walk-in steel hood in the building. So that is something unique to our labs. So if we come down this way, we also have a BOD incubator, and this is used to incubate some of our water samples, and we can set the instrument to a specific temperature. Coming down this way, in our lab, we also have a TOC, which is a total organic carbon analyzer. So what this does is it, of course, analyzes total organic carbon or total inorganic carbon. And for our samples, it can take up to 268 samples at a time. So another thing is that this lab actually contains most of the flammables that we have. So this completes an overview of the lab that we have here, and now we'll go on to the other labs that we have. So if we come down this hallway, we can actually see some of our other labs are used for research purposes. So in this lab in 231, we have our air monitoring measurements lab, where we can see some of our students are doing a column study. We can also come into 230, where we have our air emissions control lab. And here students can understand particle size distribution by allowing material to go down through different sieves that have different mesh sizes. So if we go into our next lab, in here in 229, we have our ion chromatography. And our IC is actually able to measure different anions and cations and water samples. And this instrument can be seen here. We'll now go on to our other labs in our secondary hallway. Down this way in lab 235, which is one of our research labs, we have our water treatment technologies where students can study in there. Also in this lab, we have our high performance liquid chromatography which is able to separate, identify, and quantify different components in our samples. We'll now go on to the other labs. So coming down this way we can enter into our research lab 225 where we have our gas chromatography mass spectroscopy instrument that is able to detect different elements in our samples. Additionally we have our atomic absorption here in this lab and our atomic absorption is able to detect elements in samples based on characteristic wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation from a light source. So this is our atomic absorption here. So these are some of the instruments that we have associated within our environmental engineering department and we hope that you'll be able to join us for our classes and our research opportunities. Thank you. Hello everybody, this is Juan Roman, a graduate student from the Department of Environmental Engineering. Uh, this right here is an iron chromatograph, better known as the IC. Uh, it lets you see concentrations of major cations and anions in, a, in parts per billion range in water samples. Uh, basically what the system does, it absorbs the sample solutions uh, in a column and as an extraction liquid we, known as the element, we use it to start separating those species out of the column. Uh, what lets you know how, how, how much or how many concentration you have on the water sample, it's their retention time. Basically, that's how this instrument works. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Omar Shafiq. I'm a PhD candidate here at Texas A&M Kingsville, and I primarily work with desalination. So desalination is the removal of salts and other things from water. So we can have pure water, and then we have a product that we can further purify and maybe so, or use for a different purpose as uh, another chemical catalyst or something like that. 
one of the main pieces of equipment that we use when we're trying to determine uh, how well we desalinated water or we want to test water samples to see what kind of uh, ions and such are in there is the ICPMS. Uh, the ICPMS stands for Intercoupled Plasma Mass Spectrometer. Basically what it does is it takes very, very small amounts of liquid from here and it goes through the system and into uh, through a torch which makes the particles extremely small uh, through cones and different other methods of air. There's a magnet in there that basically separates ions by charge. The negative ions go up the chute. Positive ions go get hit by a detector and it tells us how much we have in there. What's special about this is that we need only less than like two milliliters of liquid and we can tell you what's inside of it. Uh, so it uses a very small amount and it's very, very accurate. 